We've talked about this a little bit before, but when I first met Eli, we were both vendors at the same toy store in New York City. Now, we worked for different companies, but we had the same like middle management job, essentially. So there's kind of an instant camaraderie there. And then I realized that he was a vocal atheist with a dark sense of humor, and that grew into a friendship pretty quick. But back then, Eli wasn't exactly a skeptic. In fact, he was a full-blown 9-11 truther. I did not know that at the time. I just knew that he was an atheist, and he seemed pretty rational when we talked about all the logical failings of religious doctrine. So I kind of assumed he was a rationalist across the board. Anyway, at some point, one of those brief pass-by conversations that you have in a work environment, the subject of 9-11 conspiracy theories come up, uh, specifically one of the conspiracy theory documentaries about it, Loose Change or something like that. Well, Eli's a guy I often dunked on dumb ideas with, so I immediately started dunking on 9-11 conspiracy theories. I assumed that's why he'd brought it up. So I start pointing out how dumb the jet fuel doesn't burn that hot argument is. I, I, I joke about how many people would have had to been involved. I make a few thermite jokes. And the whole while, Eli's just nodding along, laughing as though he wasn't exactly the person I was making fun of at the moment. And then, you know, he gets back to work. I get back to work. And that night, after he's clocked out and gone home, he jumps online. He starts looking up some of the refutations that I mentioned started looking up some of the truth or responses to it and slowly started changing his mind. Not just about 9-11, mind you. Those of you who come out of the conspiracy fold know the kind of damn you break open when the first major conspiracy falls, right? Now, in the intervening years, I've heard Eli talk about this quite a bit, actually. He credits that conversation with being one of the really formative moments for him on his journey towards a rational worldview. And every time I hear him bring it up, I puff up with a little bit of pride. But here's my dirty little secret. I don't remember that conversation at all. I'm just recounting it based on what Eli's told me. See, since then, Eli's become one of my closest friends, right? He's my business partner. We take vacations together. I gave a speech at his wedding. I've had plenty of occasions to revisit all the interactions that led up to our friendship. And I have absolutely no recollection of this moment that he said was so potent in his intellectual growth. For me, it was just some conversation about how silly 9-11 conspiracy theories are, no different than a thousand others. I think about that a lot. Specifically, I wonder about the other 999, right? Like, is there somebody else out there with a story like Eli's? Is there some other passing interaction that I had that sowed the seeds of skepticism or helped somebody see the error of their religious faith that I don't even know about? I mean, you know, I podcast now. I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of people I've helped along that particular road without knowing about it by now. But what about before that? What about outside of that? And I just, I think this is exactly the kind of thing we should spend more time reflecting on as atheist and skeptical activists. Because look, you rarely get to see the fruits of your labor. There's this inherent tendency within people to immediately react to a challenge with a defense. Right. Such that when you first give somebody reason to doubt their sincerely held bullshit, you're far more likely to get a fuck you than a thank you. In the moment, people spring to the defense of their worldview. They reject what you're saying. They dig in their heels. They deflect, et cetera. Or at best, they do what Eli did, you know, and they sort of just awkwardly nod along and change the subject. The point is, they very rarely go on to become your friend and business partner and later tell you that that time you challenged 9-11 trutherism was really formative and important to them. Every conversation matters. Every interaction matters, even when it feels like it doesn't. Few things feel more futile than trying to sell rationality to Americans, and few things are more thankless, right? But that doesn't mean it isn't important. So whenever you start feeling like you're banging your head against a wall, by all means, you know, take a break, step away, take care of your mental health, but don't give up. Just remind yourself that someone out there could be your Eli, which means, among other things, that you should probably just erase the search history if they ever ask to borrow your phone.